In this video, we're going to go over my current EDC. EDC stands for Everyday Carry. It represents the items that you carry on your person from a day-to-day -day basis. I like to think of my EDC in terms of tiers. So tier one are the core EDC items, basically the things that everyone carries, a smartphone, a wallet, keys, and a watch. And then we expand out from there to tiers two and tiers three. So there's a lot to cover in this video. As always, I've provided a PDF document. You can download it by clicking the link in the description box below. It has a list of all the items that are gonna be covered in this particular video. So without further ado, let's get started with this video featuring my current EDC. If you're new and happen to stumble upon this video and have no idea how you got here, I'd like to welcome you. My name is Cliff, also known as The Urban Prepper, and I cover various emergency preparedness topics in addition to topics like EDC. So if you like those type of videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I also have a weekly and monthly newsletter that I send out that has some behind the scenes information on the various preparedness measures that I'm actively working on. So now let's get started with this video. Let's start off first by going through all of those tier one core EDC items. The first one being a phone. I rotate through a few different phones, but my primary one is the Google Pixel. Your smartphone is probably the most important EDC item in an urban environment due to the capabilities that it provides. I recently did a video on my phone setup, which I titled the Prepper Phone. In that video, I discussed some of the privacy and security measures that I put into place in addition to the Prepper-related apps that I have installed on my phone. In addition to the OS and app-related configuration, I also store a few additional items behind the phone case, a Band-Aid and $20 cash. Again, this is my Prepper Phone. The next core EDC item is a wallet. This is the HIMI Genuine Leather RFID Blocking Bifold Stylish Wallet. I haven't made the switch over to using one of those ultra thin wallets, so I'm still using a leather bifold wallet that has RFID blocking capabilities. This one blocks at a frequency range of 13.56 megahertz, which is common for some newer credit cards, ID cards, and driver's licenses. In addition to the typical wallet items, I do store some additional prepper specific items in my wallet. I store this tiny pen in the spine of my wallet for a quick access writing tool. This is the Narwhal pocket pen that comes in a set of two. It's high quality and comes in handy all the time. I also carry a Pocket Monkey wallet utility tool. I've been carrying this handy stainless steel credit card size tool for several years now. I mainly use just the bottle opener and letter opener on it, but it does have some additional capabilities as well. It is TSA safe and made in America. Last, I have a few first aid bandages. The first being a pack of the 3M Sterostrip reinforced skin closures. I include these in my wallet to provide quick access wound support for large gashes. The non-invasive design helps reduce scarring and the risk of infection as compared to sutures and staples. It also provides less tissue trauma, which is good for cosmetic reasons, and it uses a hyperallergenic adhesive. I also carry a single Aquacel Extra Hyperfiber Dressing. This is one of those modern wound dressings that we learned about from the Mountain RN, and this wound dressing is composed of two layers of hydrofiber. When you put it on a wound, it almost turns into like a gel-like substance. To keep it into place, I also carry a single 3M Tegaderm film dressing. It's made with a hyperallergenic latex-free adhesive that is gentle to the skin and holds dressings in place. And those are all of the items that are stored in that wallet. Next, let's start going through all the items that are stored on my keychain. The first item is a keychain pocket clip. This particular one is the Tech Accessories P7 suspension clip. I've been using this keychain suspension clip for several years now to help prevent my keys from bunching up at the bottom of the front of my pants pocket. There are generic versions of this suspension clip available on eBay for a fraction of the cost. I also carry the Leatherman Bruiser keychain bottle opener built in the USA and made of stainless steel. This keychain tool is a little tough to find nowadays. I sometimes use it as a mini pry tool. It's TSA safe and made from heat treated stainless steel. Again, the Leatherman Bruiser. Also stored on the keychain, I also include a whistle. This is the Nightcore NWS10 TC4 titanium whistle. This tiny whistle has a high pitch and the titanium alloy construction is corrosion resistant. It has a maximum sound intensity of 120 decibels and it can be used for emergency signaling. And those are all of the items that I store on my keychain. The last of the core EDC items is a watch. This one's a fancy one, this is the Movado watch. While most people use their phone for providing the time, I still think it's a good idea having an old school watch. There are a lot more prepper appropriate watches out there that provide awesome capabilities, but I've been using this Movado watch for the past several years, which was a birthday gift for my wife, so it has sentimental value. And those are all the items that are included in my core EDC items, or tier one. Now let's start going through all of the items of tier two, which are the prepper tools. Just as a quick heads up, I'm not going to be including a firearm in this particular EDC video because I don't cover them on my channel due to privacy concerns. However, if you're legally able to carry one, this is where it would belong because it is a tool. Now let's start going through the items. The first prepper tool is a knife. This one is the Benchmade Bugout 535 EDC Manual Folding Knife. I've been carrying this particular folding knife for the majority of this year. It meets all of my criteria for an ideal urban EDC knife. 
It's highly rated. The blade length is legal in my state. It has a strong locking mechanism. The drop point blade doesn't look overly tactical. You could get the handles in different colors, which I think helps make it appear less threatening in an office setting. It has an ultra deep pocket clip for concealed carry, and it's made in the USA. The bug out is also super lightweight and is made of American CPM S30V steel, which is good for edge retention and corrosion resistance. While I have carried a few other knives this year, this is the one that I've been carrying the most. The next prepper tool is a flashlight. This is the Olight Baton Pro 2000 Lumens Compact Rechargeable Side Switch LED Flashlight. I'm a big fan of Olight flashlights in general. I recently upgraded my Baton 2 for the Baton Pro, which packs more punch with a maximum output of 2000 lumens. This might be the perfect EDC flashlight. It is a great handheld size, features a high output battery, it's rechargeable with a unique Olight magnetic charging cable, has good grip, and it is made by a company that is highly regarded in the gear and preparedness community for its flashlight quality and design. Again, the Olight Baton Pro. Now let's start going through some of the mini EDC modules that I've been using. I have two mini modules, one for some miscellaneous tools and the other for my mini medi first aid kit. I've been using these Manhattan Portage coin purses for my mini modules. They've been working perfectly for this purpose. They come in a wide variety of colors and are built with high quality Cordura Plus nylon fabric. Let's first start going through my mini tools module. The first item being a multi-tool. This is the Leatherman Juice S2 multi-tool. This multi-tool is currently discontinued, but I've been using the Juice 2 for around a decade now. It's a great compact size for EDC purposes and has a wide selection of tools, including pliers, scissors, a utility blade, bottle opener, and more. I hope that Leatherman re-releases this little masterpiece. You can still find them on eBay. Again, the Leatherman Juice S2 multi-tool. The next item stored is a Bic lighter. If you're a prepper, you should have a method of starting fire on you 24 seven. The Bic lighter works every time, is inexpensive and compact. Even though I'm not a smoker, I think it's a good calling card as a prepper to have a fire starting tool on you, whether it be for lighting birthday candles, incense, or whatever. Lighters just aren't for smokers. You don't wanna be known around town as a prepper and then when someone asks if you have a lighter, not have one on you. That used to happen to me in the past, but not anymore. Again, a Bic lighter. The last item in that mini tools module is an EDC pen. This is a custom engraved Fisher Bullet Space Ballpoint Pen. This is my favorite EDC pen. It's super compact, writes effortlessly at any angle. It writes in extreme temperatures from anywhere between negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And you could even write with it if you're ever in space. I own several of them and even picked up this blue one with custom engraving to match my blue folding knife. Again, these are highly rated, the Fisher Space Pen. The next item is my Mini Medi First Aid Kit. I've been using these Mini Medis as an individual first aid kit for minor wounds that could fit in your pocket. I previously used a different storage bag for them, but these Manhattan Portage coin purses have been the most durable that I've found yet. I include a variety of modern wound dressings and band-aids in this Mini Medi. Link to the Mini Medi video is included in the PDF document. And a new item that I'm including in my EDC due to the current pandemic is the Clean Key. The Clean Key is handmade in the USA using 100% copper. I use it when out and about for opening doors, pressing pin pads, and more. Copper is inherently antimicrobial and is used in hospitals and laboratory settings as a way to fight back against the battle of contaminated surfaces. If you've ever been in public restrooms, you know that a lot of people don't wash their hands after going to the restroom. So even when the pandemic is hopefully over, I'll probably continue to carry this clean key for EDC purposes. There are some other clean key style products available, but a lot of those are made over in China and this particular one is made domestically, so that's the one that I'm going with. Again, the clean key on a lanyard for easy access. And those are all the items included in tier two of the prepper tools. For tier three, I include a few optional EDC items. Sometimes I carry these and sometimes I don't. It all depends on what outfit I'm wearing and how many available pockets I have. The first item being the Urban Altoids EDC Kit version 4.0. This EDC kit contains a lot of mini gadgets and tools that are intended to complement my regular EDC. I've made several revisions of this kit over the years and it comes in handy on random occasions. I've provided a link to this latest version in the PDF document. I also oftentimes EDC headphones. These headphones are made by Sony and include a microphone. I prefer using wired headsets. These ones aren't the most expensive, but sound good overall with a frequency response between four to 24,000 Hertz. These ones have nice sounding bass and also have an integrated microphone for use when making hands-free telephone calls. Again, some headphones. I also frequently EDC a Faraday bag. This is the Silent Pocket Faraday Bag smartphone sleeve. When I have the pocket space, I've been using this Faraday bag to go digitally off-grid from time to time. I'm not a big fan of all the tracking going on with phones nowadays, and while I can't stop that 
100%, I can make myself a little bit more annoying in that regard. This Faraday bag blocks all signals from reaching my phone and shields against a variety of things such as RFID, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC, EMPs, solar flares, cellular, GPS, and radio. It is super sleek in appearance, and I also store a few small cables in the pocket for charging and data transfer. If I can't carry it in a jacket pocket that's on me, I will carry it in my EDC backpack or in the next item that we'll talk over next. The last item that's occasionally carried for EDC purposes is a fanny pack. At the time of this EDC version, the COVID-19 pandemic is happening worldwide. I used to shy away from using a fanny pack, even though they are super functional. However, if I'm going to be out and about with a mask on, I might as well complete the look by wearing a fanny pack from time to time to store all of my EDC items. The VanQuest Dendrite is good quality and features plenty of high visibility pocket areas for EDC storage. It comes in two versions, small and large. VanQuest makes fantastic gear and this one is no exception. I don't use this one all the time for carrying my EDC gear, but I have been carrying it fairly frequently. And that concludes all of the items that I'm currently using as part of my EDC. Your EDC is tailor made for your specific needs, region, and personal preferences. No one should have identical EDCs in terms of manufacturers and gear model numbers, but the type of items may be fairly common. For example, most preppers like having a flashlight and a knife and a multi-tool, but they may have different versions of those particular items. This EDC represents what I'm currently carrying on a day-to-day -day basis in my pockets. My EDC evolves fairly slowly, so the next version will probably come out in a year to 18 months from now. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video featuring my updated EDC or everyday carry. Please feel free to leave any kind of comments below in the comment section regarding this video. As I mentioned earlier, I provided a PDF document. You could download it by clicking the link in the description box below. It has a list of all the items that were covered in this video. So stay tuned for more videos and see you guys next time. See ya.